So we're just having a bit of chill out time together. How are you doing, Mike? I'm good, mate. Yeah. You alright? Alright. Oh, yeah. We sit on that one, Mike, because it, it's the camera's uh, better on that. Grabbing some uh, Levi roots, <laughs> whatever it is. So, any thoughts about what we've been doing the last few weeks for you at Hyde Park and stuff? I think we've been doing absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I think, cool. we, I think we've made an impact in Hyde Park, Jay. Yeah, yeah. Because the Muslims are now running scared, I've noticed. They don't want to debate us, they don't want to talk to us. Yeah. There's a there's a fear going on in Hyde Park. And the Christians are starting to notice that the voice is starting to rise up now. Amen. The voice of truth Amen. is starting to, to take a stand. I thought you did well. Uh... I thought, I thought Mike did well with the uh, debate with Mohammed. If you get a chance, it's on our channel, it's on Royal Blood's channel. And uh, it's also uh, on Mohammed's channel, isn't it? It is, yeah. And uh, you've had some good comments on that. Mm, Any thoughts? Yeah, unfortunately, the we got most of the debate, but the camera battery ran out. So if you want to see the full debate, you best look at it on the Muslim channel, because they've got it all there. Yeah. But, um, covered some good topics, some good points. If you are thinking about going Hyde Park, I do urge you to do some homework and do your research because the Muslims are prepared and they have some really clever arguments so we need to overcome those. So just just ask you to do research, that's all. Yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah, Oops. be prepared. A be boy scout and be prepared. So what about... Um the incident that you had with uh, Paul Williams, what what are your thoughts about that? Do you, do you want me to give my take first, or do you want yeah, to say? Yeah, go for it, man. Well, my, my take was when I first went there and I saw you getting upset. I thought I, I just wondered if you'd re overreacted. Yeah. But when we got back and I watched the video, I was shocked to see the rudeness of Paul Williams and the guy. You know when they went. What's one plus one plus one? And they were treating you like a little kid. Yeah. And they were just like humiliating you in the sense of not treating you with any respect. Yeah. And uh, I would have, myself would have reacted and got angry with that. Yeah. You know, it was very difficult to deal with. So that was my, yeah. my take. And I thought, actually, you dealt with it really well, considering yeah. that you know, those I are my thoughts. I was very angry and I was, um, I was very vexed. If you do go Hyde Park, guys, watch Paul Williams, he is a snake. And I say that, watch him. Because he slivers around the park and he'll just attack with his intellectual, clever arguments. Mm. So just watch him, because he's a very tricky, slippery character. He's not interested in the truth, he's not interested in any kind of reasonable dialogue. He just wants to push his agenda and his views. Yeah, yeah. So even if you're well prepared for Paul Williams, He's the kind of person who doesn't want to listen. He just wants to push his his views. So yeah, just wear, yeah, just be wary yeah. of Paul Williams and um, treat him with kid gloves, basically. Yeah, uh, I brushed sword with him uh, this Sunday, uh, last Sunday, and um, he was talking to a young Christian preacher. And uh, I'd been done. I do about two days full research and study before I go down. And uh, so I'd made sure I picked up on Paul Williams, studied what he has to say studied his arguments and stuff. Anyhow, he was quoting from Acts chapter 2 and saying Jesus was made God from that chapter. And I said, hang on, let's, and I helped this young preacher, I said to Paul, he said, let's read the whole of the sermon first in context. He wouldn't do it. And uh, he just wanted to go on his agenda. He did not want a dialogue. He did not want a debate. Mm. And I felt he was quite scared of me, really. Um, he was scared to get into a proper dialogue and discussion. But he's quite happy to go around, walk around the park and look for victims who we can uh, bully and who we can say whatever he wants to say. But he doesn't want to come up against people who can challenge him. And if you do try to challenge him, he gets into this very obnoxious kind of mode where he doesn't want you to speak yeah. and, and, and tries to humiliate you. So, so be very wary of that.
So, any other thoughts about Hyde Park, bro? Yeah, I'm ready to go down to Hyde Park again in the next couple of weeks. I must tell you, it is a hostile environment, so you've got to be on the ball and you've got to be assertive for these Muslims and you mustn't let them take control. You've got to take, take control and just basically stand your ground. Don't put up any heresy or nonsense. Yeah, yeah. Just stand on the gospel, stand on the truths and be confident in what you say and what you've got. Because we've got the truth, they haven't. So we need to refute them on everything basically. Yeah. And to show them the truth. We don't want to condemn the Muslims, we don't hate the Muslims, but we have to be tough with them. Otherwise they're gonna think that Islam's the truth and they're gonna end up they're gonna die one day and realise it's not and yeah. so we wanna be we wanna try and help them. But it is tricky and difficult so be careful and be patient down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so do you study basically. Yeah, we, we, we can't emphasise this enough, enough. When you go down to Hyde Park, don't go down on a wing and a prayer. You need to go and do your research. Mm. You need to go and do preparation. If you think you're going to take on some of these Muslim apologists, go and listen to them. Go and find out what their arguments are. Go and do some research. Research. Go on Islamic uh, Answering Islam. Uh, go and listen to David Wood and Jay Smith and their lectures and debates. Um, and also, uh, even go on the Muslim sites, Islamic Awareness, and find out what they're saying. Research what the opposition's saying, and and make sure you do your particular meticulous research. And make sure you read your Bible. Make sure you go and pray. And if you can go down as a team, as a group of people working together, that's even better. Yeah. But please, please, so many Christians go down there without any preparation. They end up having debates, and they're made to look stupid. So you you need to do your preparation before you go down there. And All also right. as well, um, watch out for questions that they're asking. Some of the questions that they're asking are not necessarily sincere questions, they're just questions to entrap you. And once you've answered those questions, once you've answered a certain way to a question, you, they've got you in an entrapment, so just be careful of that. Yeah. Just be careful, with, be discerning of who's genuine, who isn't, who's, who's out to just basically make you look stupid. Um, I would urge you to watch out for Shamsi as well because he uses that old argument, is Jesus God? And then you then you say yeah. And then he goes, is God a man? You say no. And then he goes, how could Jesus be God? And, he may, and then he does that in front of the camera. So just be careful and make sure that he doesn't take control in the area. Make sure you, you word things correctly and just basically push him back a bit. Mm -hmm. So we've been doing research and study. So where, where do you think... Um We've been pushing them back like over the last few months. Like, where do you think, like in arguments and debates, where do you think we've been, like pushing them back? Any thoughts? Uh, I would say on is Jesus God. We've been answering that very well. Um, we've been using the 99 names of Allah, which one of them is the light, and we which says the Bible says Jesus is the is the light of the world. Another one is the first and the last. The Book of Revelation says Jesus is the first and the last. So basically, their 99 names of God actually say that Jesus is God. Um, we've been getting them on the Quran where the Quran says that Jesus is the Word of God. So the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the Word of God. The Word became flesh and in the beginning was the Word. Now we say Jesus is God because he's the Word of God. Muslims say no, 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 no. And we say yeah because you can't separate God's Word from God. That it's the same thing you can't separate it because then it becomes someone else's word so we've been pushing them on we've been having them on things like that um, I'm trying to think of other things we've had them on we've had them on quite a few things but one of them is, is Jesus God and we've been answering that quite quite good as well yeah, yeah. Uh, we've been using their own Quran against them as well I have not had the opportunity to, to use this yet but it's something that I'm going to do uh, their own Quran says Muhammad is not in any kind of prophetic line so I really want to push the Muslims on that and also, I want to hit them on um, Ishmael. M uh, Muslims claim that Ishmael is is a descendant of Muhammad, and vice versa. And I've got evidence to prove to the contrary. So it's yeah. things like that that we I can get them on, and yeah. just just catching them out in their own in their own words. Yeah. I think uh, also I've been trying to focus on the historical Jesus and focusing on the uh, evidence for the cross 
um, and I've tried to bring that home. I brought it. I brought it home about four or five months ago mm. with the Jamaican guy, and I brought it home with Mansoor recently. And basically, in my own opinion, I don't think they can like deal with it. Really, they haven't got the historical evidence to back up what they're saying. Uh, and the other thing that I've been bringing up from time to time is textual criticism of the Quran, the Quranic manuscripts, asking what the name of the Quranic manuscripts are behind the Quran, and we're not getting any answers, we're just getting complete blank looks, which is like exposing them that really they just haven't got a clue what they're talking about, really. Um, so here's a question, Mike. Um, over the last however long we've been going down there, what are the main things that God has been teaching you through it all? Is to stand, stand to defend the gospel. Uh, I feel that the Holy Spirit has been guiding me to, to answer the Muslims' questions, what they've been asking. I do believe some of the questions the Muslims do want answers for them. So I feel God is, is urging me to answer these questions and also to defend the integrity of the Bible. Because what they do, they attack the integrity of our scripture say it's been corrupted, say it's been changed. There's no evidence to the contrary to say that the Bible's been changed or corrupted. Mm. Um, the overwhelming, the evidence for the Bible is overwhelming. The historical evidence, the archaeological evidence, the inscriptions, the historians. The evidence for Christianity is far stronger than Islam. I feel the Muslims are sensing that, but because of their pride and their arrogance, they're not willing to submit to that. Um, if any Muslims are watching this video today, I just want to tell you, you need to be born again. Because the Bible says the natural man cannot um, comprehend the things of God. You have to have the spirit in you to understand spiritual things. And you cannot understand, you don't know who God is unless the Son reveals him to you. And you need to have the Son in your heart. If you've got Allah in your heart, you've got no chance. You need to come to Jesus Christ. Mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think I've been learning. I think one of the things that I'm learning is... Um, Maybe at Hyde Park, um, I love to preach, um, but I think maybe the best way down there is to debate. If you can get a, a friendly, amicable debate, because you're going to get people to listen to you then. Um, there's so many of these Muslims go down and, and overcrowd you. Uh, you've got uh, 50, 60, maybe more Muslims around you shouting at you, heckling. So unless you've got a lot of experience in street preaching, it's very, very difficult to control that kind of crowd. Mm. And uh, I'm thinking more and more that if you do go down there, maybe having one-to-one -one debates would be a better way of... So long as you bring in the gospel, it's no good doing apologetics if you're not going to bring in the gospel. Mm. But so long as you bring in the gospel to have one-on-one -on -one discussions with people, because it's going to get filmed and you can get the gospel out there. Not into these dog fights, but into more of an amicable deb debate if you can get into that situation. Um, I think I've learned that I think I've learned Islam's are full of lies. Mm. I think it's a very deceptive religion. Uh, for example, there's never been a textual edition of the Quran ever done and yet these Muslims are going around attacking the Bible which is a disgrace. They're attacking the Bible saying the Bible's changed and they've never done any textual criticism on their own Quran which is an absolute nonsense. And uh, the the lies where you have atheists and Muslims attacking Christians down at Hyde Park. Yeah, you answer that, bro. Uh, Muslims and Christians attacking you at Hyde Park, which shows you the, the disingenuousness of the Muslim people that they would side with atheists when the atheists are attacking uh, Christianity. Uh, and I think, um, I think I've been learning that we need to stand together as Christians. A lot of the uh, Christians down there need to work together and it, 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 it's shocking to me to find that we're not seeing pastors and churches supporting the Christians down at Hyde Park. Yeah. We need, that's why we're going down. One of our, our desires, isn't it, is to go down and encourage Christians. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. that's what one of the things that we've wanted to do, isn't it? Yeah. You know. I do feel when I'm in Hyde Park that I feel like Jesus felt when he was dealing with the Pharisees and the hypocrites and the, the chief priests. I feel like that's what Jesus had to put up with when he was doing his earthly ministry. So, and there is one more thing that the Muslims always bring, they always attack the Bible on this one, it's the parable where Jesus says, I've not come to bring peace but a sword. 
I just want all Christians, the best way to answer that, guys, is to explain to the Muslims that the sword that Jesus is talking about is not a literal sword, it's a spiritual sword. He's talking about division within a family. So if one person's a Christian in a family and the, and the rest of them are atheists, then there's going to be division, there's not going to be peace. Yeah. But Jesus is the Prince of Peace. He came, to, he came to bring us peace with God. But knowing Jesus Christ and being a follower of Jesus Christ, there's going to be, there isn't going to be peace within a family or within friends. So that's the, that's what the power of, that's what it's, he's actually speaking about. But the Muslims claim it's a violent verse when we attack them on their violent verses. I just want to get that out there. So if, I, if you ever encounter that, that's, that's kind of the answer that you need yeah. to give them. Yeah. Because that. Christianity was never spread by the sword, it was spread by the Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, and of preaching. Islam mm. has always been spread by violence. You see, the truth, see, deceit can prosper for, for many times, a lie can go around the world many times, but it takes a long time for truth to put its boots on and start walking, and that's what we're doing, that's what's happening now, the truth is starting to surface. Mm. Mm. So yeah, I just Amen. wanted to just Amen. include that because that's what one of the big ones that the Muslims throw out there. It's a parable. It's a spiritual sword, not a literal sword. Just Muslims need to know that and need to be put in the place and that and that. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So, so Mike, where do you think? Uh, so we're planning to go down in August. Yeah. And uh, we hope to take a team down. Yeah. Uh, so we're praying about that. Uh, so. Where where do you think we're gonna go like in the next few months like with Hyde Park like what what do you think our our strategy our vision um, arguments focus should be uh, in the next few months because it, it I was a bit reluctant to get involved yeah there was a bit of me that I was I was not at peace at first mm. and I seem to have got a, a real peace recently yeah and um, so I'm on board. So how do we, like, how do you see like your own ministry when we go down there, our ministry together, and like, what are we trying to achieve, and what arguments, and where we're we going uh, with Hyde Park in the next few months? I think what we need to focus on is saving souls and bringing the truth to the people that we speak to, not just Muslims but atheists and people out there who are feasts or agnost agnostics. So. I think what the thing we can do down there is to build relations with people, people who are of faith or people of no faith. If we can do that, we can then exchange telephone numbers, contact details, and maybe we could have one-to-ones uh, rather than having dogfights. Because dogfights will come, don't get me wrong, that will happen. But the focus needs to be on saving one soul at a time. So if we can speak to one person who's ready to, he wants to listen, and he's taken on board what we say, then the job's done. Amen. We're doing the job. Amen. Amen. You know, it's not always about fighting and who's right, who's wrong. We've got the apologetics, we've got the truth, we know that. Now it's the time of educating. We need to educate these people and bring them in, reel them in. We need to be fishers of men, as Jesus said. Let's be fishers of men. Amen. Amen. Let's do it in the spirit now, man. Amen. I think uh, when I was down there last, yeah. um, when I was down there last, I, um, I, it was quite funny really because I was, I'd was i done a lot of preparation for debates and stuff. I did some preaching, but I found like quite a lot of my time I was standing with preachers. Right. You know, I was, I, was, I was standing with preachers, supporting them. But then through the day, I had quite a lot of Gospel of Johns. <laughs> I had a lot of Gospel of Johns and I was able to get them to the Muslims. Yeah. And near the end of the day, there was this uh, young Muslim woman, and she uh, she was on holiday, and she was only there for the day uh, at, at Hyde Park, and uh, she took a, a Gospel of John, and I thought it was really fruitful because of what you're saying. I, I had these one-to-one -one conversations with yeah. people uh, and stuff. I think for me, I think what I would I would like a couple of things really. I, I hope that we could build a, a proper team where we're all together working together where there might be more like five or six of us going down that that would be a, if, if that could ever happen that'd be amazing so if you could pray for that uh, the other one is to encourage the Christians down there so we've already built contacts I've got some phone numbers and emails that I need to get in contact and maybe ask them to come up to Manchester and we, we work together um, 
And I think thirdly, maybe to try and develop some more of these debates, but more in a professional way, like you did with Mohammed. Yeah. You know, do that. Uh, which is going to be a bit difficult because they seem to be running a bit scared of us at the moment. Uh, there was a funny incident, uh, and like it was interesting about relationship. Uh, some Muslims came up to me at the end of the day, and there was these lovely Muslim guys, and they come up to me and said, "Oh, Jason, your friend wants to talk to you. He really likes you." And we got chatting, and we we're having a good laugh. And they were saying, "Are you married?" I said, "No." They said, "How come you're not married?" So that for about 20 minutes. They were giving me advice how to chat up ladies, how to, how to get a proper day, how to keep a woman. And it was good, I was building up a relationship, you know, and, and that's what I think we're getting, we are getting to be known, aren't we? Yeah. People are getting to know us, and, um, and I think that's a good idea, that might, to, to build on that. I think another thing that we could do, I don't know what you think, but maybe take the table down yeah. and put literature on the table. You know, so uh, and I think we'll get a lot of people coming to us yeah. with that as well. You I know, we should, yeah, and definitely. get and get some literature out as well. Yeah. It makes it look more. Well, it's got some literature here because the Muslims were doing that at Hyde Park. They had all their literature on Muhammad and Islam and all that. So I think we should do the same. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Um, we're not there to have a competition with the Muslims because the competition there's no competition really between Jesus and Muhammad. Just there to tell people the good news and bring them home. Yeah, yeah. So, Muslims, the Bible says that we're all like lost sheep and we've all gone astray. And there's a shepherd out there who's called the Good Shepherd, called Jesus Christ, and he'll lead you home. He'll lead you to the good pasture. So, don't follow Muhammad, follow Jesus Christ, the one and true Saviour. Come to him now before it's too late, guys. Um, it doesn't want, we don't want to condemn you. Jesus never came to condemn, he came to save. Yeah, and yeah. we want to convey that message as well. We don't want it to be a condemning message. We want it to be a message of, you know, reconciliation, of truth. So you know, we don't want it to perish. So we just want to bring the gospel to you and also show you that we know what we're talking about when it comes to yeah. defending our faith against yeah. anything that's false. Um, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So so. That, that is our heart's desire. Our heart's, our heart's desire, uh, Muslim folks, is really is to get you saved, to see you saved, really. We, we just want to share the gospel, uh, proclaim the cross. Um, if we mention that Islam is violence, we, we didn't, we're not doing that because we, um, because, uh, we, have, we, we hate Islam in the sense of we have any hate. We, we, we just have to be honest and truthful uh, and if we see it in your scripture we have to say it we're not going to uh, pussyfoot around and just play games we'll tell you straight but when we do that we, we do it at, we, we do genuinely care about people we travel from Manchester all the way to Manchester go down to London and we're doing it because we care about you we're doing it because we want to share the gospel mm. and we want to encourage Christians so any any um, thoughts about um, the arguments that that Muslims are bringing up at the moment, and uh, any any arguments that they've been bringing up that you've been seeing, and how do you know how how can we refute them? And uh, well, one of the arguments I've seen being brought up at Hyde Park is Isaiah 42. Now there's a guy called Shamsi at Hyde Park. And he says that Isaiah 42 is talking about Muhammad, it's a prophecy of Muhammad. Um, that's been refuted many times by scholars and people who have debated Islam. Um, you only have to go to the book of Matthew, Matthew 12, and read from there. And it tells you, Jesus quotes Isaiah 42 for himself. And I've got a book called The Bible Commentary by is it John MacArthur, mm. by John MacArthur. And he, on Isaiah 42, he quotes different Bible verses to, to, that show that it ain't talking about Muhammad. What you've got to realise, Muslims, is that the Bible, with this Bible, the Scripture complements Scripture. There's always a, there's always a, uh, what's the word now? There's always like um, identical text somewhere else in the Bible. That's how God's designed it to avoid people corrupting it or making a false message. So if what you can see something in the Old Testament, you'll see it fulfilled in the New Testament. That's what we see in the Bible. So you can't just make claims like that. You have to back it up, and we can back it up. I'm 
Okay. Yeah. Um, another argument I've heard a lot is Paul Williams. He's been saying um, Jesus is talking about a parable. So he's talking to the rich young ruler, and the rich young ruler says, um, "What do I need to do to inherit eternal life?" And Jesus says, "Good teach." Sorry, he says, "Good teacher, what do I need to do to inherit eternal life?" And Jesus, says, "Why do you call me good? Only God is good alone." And Paul Williams quotes that to say that Jesus isn't God. Well, what Jesus is actually saying in that parable is that God is only the God is the only one that is good. And that the rich young ruler, so the rich young ruler's God, was his money. And Jesus is emphasising that to him because he he quotes, I think he quotes five of the commandments mm. that the man keeps. But the one he doesn't keep is the first commandment, which says, "Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind." That's why Jesus asks that question. Only good, only God is good alone. He's he's getting the man to think about his position, where he's at. And doesn't detract away from the fact that Jesus is God. That's good, man. That's good. Uh, a couple of things that I've noticed um, is uh, I caught Hamza uh, debating a guy, um, and uh, he was talking about um, Matthew twenty-eight nineteen, and Matthew uh, twenty-eight nineteen talks about go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and he says in. Um, uh, in Eusebius, Eusebius quotes it, yeah. and he only quotes us only half of the verse. So he says it's not in the actual Bible because Eusebius doesn't quote it all. But what they don't tell you is Eusebius quotes it 19 times. Out of those 19 times, 16 times he does a short version, yeah. but the, three of those times he quotes the long version. The other point as well is that he, when he does quote, sometimes he does quote verses and he, and he makes it short and that's yeah. his way so it doesn't mean to say that there was a um, that 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 there was a short version of the Matthew passage that says go into all the world in the name of the Father Son and Holy Spirit mm. the second thing is is um, the Muslims say that the manuscripts there are early manuscripts with uh, that passage in when you look at all the early manuscripts uh, the first 200 years we only have small parchments like chapter 5 of Matthew or chapter 6 of Matthew. So to say that we haven't got all of the, the that, that passage in uh, 2819 is ridiculous because all the full manuscripts that we have of Matthew, all the full mas manuscripts have that passage in. The other thing as well is uh, they, they'll mention that in Acts it doesn't use Father, Son and Holy Spirit for baptism. But if you read uh, Luke, the Gospel of Luke, he says, quotes, go into all the world, he doesn't mention Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Mm. What that's showing you is when in the book of Acts it says, uh, baptize in the name of, of Jesus, that's shorthand for Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Wow. All the early church fathers, the Didache and many of the early church fathers, uh, Ignatius, Polycarp, all quote, uh, go in the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Mm. So textually the manuscripts um, and uh, early church fathers, no one can say that that passage is not trinitarianly there right early on in the church. The other point um, as well is if, if they quote any scholarship, they might quote Wainham or a dictionary to prove their point. They're cherry picking because if you read on with these quotes, you'll find that it's completely different from what they're saying. So be careful if they quote any scholarship against you. Um, I think um, the other point. So, sorry, go. The other point is um, a lot of these Muslims are beginning to talk about there were many different Christianities at the at the time of the early church. Well, number number one there is uh, so when we say Jesus died and rose again, they're saying oh well, there's that that's just one version. There are other versions, but. Um, the first point to state with that is the Lord Jesus appointed uh, apostles. So right early on, they were guardians of the truth right at the beginning. We have in like 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 15, uh, chapter 15 verse 1 to 7, we have an early creed there that shows you there was an orthodoxy right at the beginning. There weren't many view, just many views on many different Christianities, but right at the beginning, the Christianity was early orthodox about Jesus dying and rising again. Um, 
So those are just some thoughts. Um, on, I just want on to that. say another thing as well to the Muslims. I just want to say, Muslims, sin is a terrible thing. That's why Jesus had to die for sin, because sin is an abomination to the Lord. God cannot just push sin under the carpet. There has to be a payment for sin. And because God is holy, Jesus Christ paid the wages of sin. The book of Romans says the wages of sin is death. Jesus paid the wages of sin by dying. Amen. Paid for it. Well, keep going, keep going. I'll just... Paid the wages of sin. So if you think that you can die and stand before God, and you can just get in by saying, God, I've done good works. I'm a good person. I've done all me. It's not by works. The Bible says it's not by works that we come to the Lord. It's by faith. The just shall live by faith. That's why I should, I'm telling you now, Muslims, don't follow the law because the law is a curse. Come Amen. to the Saviour and he takes the burden of the law off your shoulders. Amen. We're under grace. We're not under a law. We're not under Sharia law, as Jason said, as Jason clearly stated at Hyde Park. We're under grace. Amen. We need to stand in the grace of God and be born again in the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 It's, wrong. it's me reading Romans last night. <laughs> Do you want to ask me a qu any questions, Mike? Have you got any questions for me? And then we'll wrap up unless you want to talk about something else. How do you feel about Hyde Park again? How, how are you feeling? Are you feeling more determined than? Do you, just, do you feel more determined each time that you know that you're going down there, or do you have? Do you, do you contemplate things? Do you have any doubts or anything? Um, well, I I um, when I first started, I was quite excited. When I went down first with Kieran right at the beginning, uh, and then I was very disappointed because I hit that guy. You know that big guy? Oh yeah. What, uh, is he called Donkey or somebody? Or? <laughs> I don't know what he's called. <laughs> the guy I hugged in the last video. All oh, right, I think it was. I hit him. It was like hitting a tiger tag, <laughs> and my head was spinning. Oh, and I come back. I thought, what was that all about? <laughs> I thought I'd been slapped by fifty tiger tags. <laughs> so I was a bit discouraged. And then um, I went down again. Did I go down with you the next time? I think so, yeah. We've been down a few times now. Yeah. I went down with you and, uh, I, and uh, I was still a bit uneasy because uh, it was a dog fight with, um, with that Mansoor. Yeah, you was. know, it was just a pure dog fight and uh, uh, I, just, I just didn't enjoy it really. And... Um, I was glad uh, that a couple of you was able to share the gospel and stuff. Uh, but the last two that we've had, that we went we went down and then I've went down, I've found that it's been a lot more fruitful. Uh, I think when me and you went down, there was such a peace. I felt such a peace on that day. Uh, it was just amazing. And I felt like the Lord was with us all day. Yeah. And I think we, people were upholding us in prayer. Yeah. You know, there were even people in America praying for us. And I felt the same this time, um, and it was quite strange because I thought they don't want to debate me. They can't. They, they, I, there was these Muslim apologists walking past me, and I thought they're scared. They're, they're running scared, you know. Um, and um, and it was good because uh, I was able to have a lot of one-on-ones with talking to people, you know. Mm. So I feel um, there's a work to be done down there. Yeah. I wouldn't like to go down all the time. Yeah. But maybe once a month, just yeah. go down. And um, I think if we take it slowly and uh, build relationships and do some debates and maybe provide resources for Christians, yeah. apologetic resources, maybe um, try and get the Christians together. I've had an idea of maybe having a worship service once a month, yeah. encouraging Christians to meet together and have a worship service. And yeah. So, yeah, I think... Um, but maybe just once a month. Yeah. It's too too much every week or yeah, yeah. every couple of weeks, you know. Because uh, because um, the the more while you're down there, you do get these fruit opportunities for fruitful discussion. Mm. But there's also a lot of danger with all this uh, dog fighting going on yeah. and heckling, and I don't think that's fruitful. No, it's not. And if you're there all the time, you're going to get into that. Mm. So you're better off just going once every month. And having um, having fruitful discussions with people. Yeah. <coughs> well, another thing as well down at Hyde Park is that if you if you expose Islam and 
you challenge their beliefs and you say things about Muhammad, which, which are true according to their own traditions, you get labelled as a hate preacher. So I just want to say, a hate preacher is, is not someone that brings truth, I just want to make that clear. A hate preacher is someone that brings hate. We're bringing truth when we go down there. We're bringing the love of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And if that offends, and, the, and you want to label us hate preacher, then you've totally missed, understood what we're there for, to do. Yeah, I, I think I think what what that's all about is they're jumping on the bandwagon of political correctness in this country, mm. and they're they're using that to hide behind, so that uh, Islam can't be critiqued. Yeah, and I think that's where they're at. And um, in order to mute your opposition, you if you demonise them, um, you can get people to turn away from from that voice, and that's what they're trying to do. So that, that shows you the intellectual vacuousness, the intellectual emptiness and the desperation with these Muslim apologists down at Hyde Park. Yeah. I mean, quite a few of them are quite young, they're quite inexperienced. So their tactics of doing that is immature. And um, But then again, some of the older ones like Adan and Paul Williams, who should know better, are, are still jumping on the bandwagon. But the hypocrisy is, I was listening to uh, Mohammed Hij Hijab or whatever his name is, or yeah. whatever you know the guy, yeah, yeah, the tall guy who does yeah. his, that with the beard or yeah. yeah, and uh, he'd been uh, in an altercation uh, with a, a Shia scholar mm. or a young Shia guy, and some of the, these guys come to a debate and caused a ruffle. They weren't his friends, but they come. And afterwards, they had a video about it. And on the on, on the panel of the video, there was a guy who was who who had been at at Adam Ad, is it Chowdhury? Uh, 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 Andrew Chowdhury. Andrew Chowdhury, yeah. yeah. March, and then and he's and he's denying and saying, "Oh well, you know, I wasn't part of it. I wasn't part of him and all that." And I just, but he, he condemned himself because he contributes mm. to his channel, Chowdhury's channel. Oh, do you? <laughs> It's not good. <laughs> it's not good. That so in prison now for five years. I know. So, but the point is, these these Muslim apologies down in London, at Hyde Park, are, are going round attacking Lizzie and uh, Jay Smith, and and saying that they hate preachers. And then you've got that kind of nonsense. The double standards. Isn't double standards. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, and the other thing as well, is. When when we when people go down there, nobody's walking in fear with the Christians. Nobody's walking in fear. The Christians aren't threatening anybody. There's no intimidation by the Christians. Mm. But this Sarah and the Muslim altercation, you know, the, the black people down there, some of them with, with Sarah, are walking around having to watch their back because of the, some of the young Muslims down there. So it's hypocrisy yeah. that they go around talking about the Christians are hate preachers down there when black people are having to walk around in feeling intimidated by some and the of these Jews, that are Jewish as well. some Muslims and some of the Jewish mm. Jewish people and um, and uh, it, it, it's just ridiculous so and then they go on they're, they're contributing to uh, Chowdhury's uh, YouTube channel so you can't you can, if you're going to throw stones just remember the stones are going to come back at you yeah and as well there's a lot of anti-Semitism out there, the hatred of the Jews. I just want to make this clear to everyone that hates Jews, maybe Muslims. Jesus was a Jew. Now, if you claim that you love Jesus more than the Christians, or that you love Jesus in any sight, in any sense of the word, then why you need to stop this anti-Semitism because Jesus was a Jew. If you're going to start hating Jews, you're going to start hating Christ, then aren't you? I'm not mm. saying do that, but you can see the hypocrisy there. Um, there's no reason to hate the Jews. The Jews have done nothing wrong. We don't hate the Jews as Christians. The Jews were, were given the promised land. They were promised that land. And that promise is going to come true one day. Because one day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And that, that will come true in some time. Amen. So no, no more hatred, love. Jesus said love, no hate. Yeah, so spread some love. Give me a hug, Muslims. Come on now, you can do it. <laughs> Give me a hug. <laughs> hug me, hug me. Yeah. Um, Sorry. So, come on, what? 
John Lennon sang in his song All You Need Is Love and you know what he got that song from basically he agreed with religion that said all you need is love and I think he got that from the Christian message because the book of 2nd Corinthians says love is patient, love is kind 1 Corinthians, one, Sorry, one Corinthians. One Corinthians 13 I stand corrected <laughs> <laughs> uh, Another point I'd like to bring up is the thing that really exasperates me down at High Park is the absolute cherry picking of the Muslim apologists when they start cherry picking Bible verses so one of the things that they've been uh, throwing around the last few weeks is uh, baby killing, that the Bible's full of baby killing. Baby killing, baby killing. So they quoted, uh, I had a, a young Muslim um, throw, throw out in the evening uh, that the Bible uh, advocates baby killing and, and uh, threw out a, a psalm which says, happy, uh, happy if you dash the head of a child upon a stone or whatever. And um, and he said, oh, it's advocating baby killing. And I told him the context. And the thing is about the Muslims is they go really, really mad at Hyde Park if you quote the, the Quran out of context. They say, do you know Arabic? Do you know the Hadiths? They go big, well big on it. So, you you know, they don't let you quote anything unless, unless you get it in context. But yet they're allowed to quote the Bible to you. And so long, they don't care about context. And... And, and they don't feel they have to justify the context. So if you read the passage in, in the psalm where it talks about happy if you dash a, a child's head against a stone, it's not advocating killing uh, children there. If you look at the context, empires were destroying kids, destroying people, raping, killing, murdering, smashing kids' heads on stones. So what it's saying is, it's saying, look, if you do this, it's going to come back on you and your people. It's kind of like the Nazis. If the Nazis are going to murder and slaughter people, don't expect the German nation to not get some comeback for that. You know, the German nation got bombed by Churchill and the bombers went over Berlin, and ch sadly, children died. But that, but that was the Nazis' fault for killing and, and slaughtering and murdering innocent people. And that it comes back to uh, the passage in uh, Genesis. It was brought up by another apologist, you know Hamza's friend. Oh yeah, yeah. You know the Hamza guy. Hamza, he's got a, a, a mate on who's with him. You know, you know when we were debating Mansur. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, there was a guy who was with him. Right. Do you remember? You were talking to him at the beginning, and I said, "Can I help?" And then I got yeah, involved. I well, so, well, yeah, that yeah. guy, he was going around saying, "Oh, the Bible says kill babies and stuff like that," and. Um, the um, he quoted from Samuel. I said, "Wait a minute! It's not just Samuel. It goes way before that. In the time of Abraham, God said, i 'I'm giving you. I'm going to give you the land to Abraham to your descendants. But before I do, I'm going to wait 400. And, I don't know if it was 50 years, 450 years, until the Amorites' iniquity uh, is finished. You know." So God was saying, look, I'm going to allow these, this nation to continue to do its iniquity for 400 and odd years, and then I'm going to bring wrath upon that nation. Yeah. So Israel was the sword of God on a wicked nation that had killed children, slaughtered people, and it was being judged for the wickedness that it's done. Now he said, uh, yeah, but what are the babies? The babies were innocent. But again, that's missing, missing the point about sin sin is not just a private thing it's a social thing yeah. so if a nation is doing evil then nations get judged and unfortunately people who are in that nation they're going to get hurt yeah. because of the nation's evil plus as well if these children grow up god might god can see the future he may see that when these children grow up they're just going to be as evil as the as the predecessors yeah yeah so in, an, in order to to stop that he has to root go to the root yeah, Before yeah, it, it yeah. It's worse. So yeah. God, in his in his judgment, knew knew exactly what he was doing. Yeah, yeah, and and the other hypocrisy there is they're attacking the Bible. Their own Quran tells you that the Bible's fine. That you're to read the Bible. You're to respect the Torah. You're to respect the Injil. And so they don't even follow their own Quran. Their own Quran does not attack the Torah. Their own Quran does not attack the Injil. Yet they'll constantly try to pick holes in the Gospels and pick holes in the Torah, etc. And it's just complete 
hypocrisy, complete fabrication. But then you can switch it back on the Muslim. Uh, let's look at the Quran. Let's look at the evil in the Quran. Mm. You know, plow your wife like a field. Uh, you can have four wives. You can be in war and crucify people. Yeah, cut, their hands off. cut their hands off and crucify people. And in the holy month of Ramadan, it says in the holy months, make war on the disbelievers until there's no more fitna in the land, which it means disbelief. So you're allowed to wage war on disbelievers. But in the same, in another passage, it says the Jews and the Christians have got their reward with their lo their Lord. Believe in the previous scriptures. It doesn't. It's a hishash of contradictions and mistakes. In one sentence it says the Christians are good, they're okay. In another sentence it says no other religion accepted except Islam. Yet in another passage it says believe in the previous scriptures and you have nothing to stand unless you stand on the toe of the gospel. So there's no, there's no wonder there's confusion in, in, Islam, in the Muslim world and there's so much violence and, because no one can make head and the tail of it. No one with, who's got half a brain can make head and the tail of that. It's no true. one with no brain could make head and tail of it. I do apologise. <laughs> That's the thing about the Quran. Honestly, it, 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 it's just a mismatch. It, 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 when you read the Bible, it's it's like full stories, isn't it? Yeah. It, it makes sense from yeah. cover to cover. It does. Uh, the, the, each book is it is its own entity. Yeah. You know when the beginning, you know when the end. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's a historical context that you can find within the Bible. Yeah. Uh, but the Quran, you can tell it's been edited, you can tell it's been mishmashed, put together, yeah. slapped together. It, many of the surahs don't even make sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? They just don't make sense. People appear out of nowhere and then they just disappear yeah. again. And, and, <laughs> and it's constant repet repetition. Yeah. And a lot of it, a lot of it is about war. When you're reading it and reading it, war comes up a lot. Yeah. Violence comes up a lot. It's quite remarkable how it comes up. It's a war manual. And it's a war manual. And uh, the other thing as well is it mentions stuff about um, how to live your life, uh, like uh, practical uh, things about um, your will and who inherits what. Some of those things you can tell are from their own time because it's like the, the guys inherit more than the women yeah. and stuff like that. But the main issues is right in the Quran, it denies straight away that Jesus is God, yeah. saying God has no son. It denies that Jesus died on the cross, and we have tons of evidence to prove yeah. contrary to that. Yeah. The other thing as well, it doesn't even understand the Christian faith. Mm. In the Quran, it says that the Trinity is Father, Mother, and Son. Yeah, Father, Mary, and Son. That's what the Quran teaches about about, uh, have you got it there, Mike? I have indeed, yes. Do you want to read it? It's um, Surah Force 171. Do you want to read it? Um, I'll have to get it on my phone in a second. The Quran teaches that Christians worship Mary as God. Um, is there a possibility that Muhammad met Catholics and the Catholics don't worship Mary as God, do they? Um, no, but they so, some sections do though. Not 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 officially, but they some do deify deify yeah. it. Another point's come up as well. Um, do you want me to go on to this? Yeah, if you could just read that Quranic verse. Yeah, I'll read it now. Surah Surah five seventy three to seventy four. Hold me a minute, folks. It's just loading up on my phone. Okay. Surah 5, 73 to 74. They have certainly disbelieved who say Allah is the third of three, and there is no God except one God. And if they do not desist from what they are saying, there will be surely afflict the disbelievers among them a painful punishment. So will they not repent to Allah and seek his forgiveness? And Allah is forgiving and merciful. So for, so for. Oh, another thing as well, if you're getting stuff off the internet, make sure it's uh, accurate as well. Because I've had a few things that are not accurate, so do check them. And this is a good time to do it now. Okay. 
Okay, Surah 4, 171 says, O people of the scripture, do not commit excess in your religion or say about Allah except the truth. The Messiah, Jesus the son of Mary, was but a messenger of Allah and his word which he directed to Mary and a soul created at a command from him. So believe in Allah and his messenger and do not say free. Yeah. So in that, what it's actually saying here, the Messiah Jesus, which is the son of Mary, was a messenger and, he's a, and he was the word and which he directed to Mary a soul. So don't say free. Do not say free. This is Allah is but one. So I think the passage is actually saying that Mary, Jesus and Allah are the Trinity, which is not true. Mm, and there's a, I think there's another clearer passage somewhere where it talks about that do not say three, Father, Mary and Son. There's a verse there, but we, we, you know, you've, you've looked at some of them anyway. But, uh, yeah, but the Quran teaches something that Christians don't even believe, Christians don't even teach, you know, there's uh, another thing about, about the Trinity, about the, the Trinity. There's another thing as well, it says in the Quran that we have killed the Messiah in boast, but they killed him not. I just want to make this clear to Muslims that no Jew out there believes Jesus is the Messiah. The only Jews that believed Jesus was the Messiah are the ones that were converted at the time of Christ. The, ch the, church te the church teaches that ultimately Jesus was rejected as the Messiah by the Jews. So for the Quran to say that the Jews said, we have killed the Messiah, is incorrect because the Jews would not kill the Messiah. If they believed Jesus was the true Messiah of God, they would not have killed him, they would have exalted him, and they, he would be their Lord and Saviour. Wow, that's a good that point. That is the truth. That's a good point. So the Quran's incorrect in that respect. Amen. Amen. Any other thoughts, bro? Um, oh yeah, another thing as well. The one of the I, I had a debate with. I can't think of his name. The one, ha Hassan. Ham, is it Hassan? Is it? He had your Hussein, name. Hassan. Hussein. 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 He says that we believe God is a baby. I just want to make it clear that no Christian out there believes that God is a baby. That is blasphemy and that's heresy. It doesn't teach it in the Bible. So please don't say that we believe God is a baby. Please understand, when we say Jesus Christ came to this earth as a man, that God came to this earth through the person of Jesus Christ, we're not saying he's a baby. No, we believe in a God of miracles. God can enter his own creation, his own world, yeah. through the person of Jesus Christ, and he can still run heaven, and we can still call Jesus God and not commit blasphemy, because the Bible says, whoever has the Son has the Father. Whoever believes in the Son believes in the Father. Amen. If you've seen the Son, you've seen the Father. Amen. The two, he says, I and the Father are one. Are one. And another thing as well is that M Muslims believe that Moses spoke to, um, that God spoke to Moses through the burning bush. And, there was, and God was still, where was God? While he was speaking to Moses, he was running in heaven. We believe in a God of miracles. Muslims don't believe in a God of miracles. That's why you get confused about the Trinity. Yeah, and the other thing as well, uh, about that as well, is um, one of the things that Muslims might say is, well, doesn't God change their one minute? In, he's in eternity. And then the next thing, he comes as a, ba uh, 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 as a man, and he's subject to like um, uh, the forces of nature, and how can God be subject to the forces of nature like gravity, mm. when when God's above it? Well, the, the couple of things to say are that you don't get out of it yourselves as Muslims. If you believe the Quran is eternal, you cannot have two eternals. If the Quran is eternal, it's either part of God. Or it's not. If it's not part of God, you've got two gods. If the Quran is eternal and it's part of God, then the eternal word came into time and is subject to being in time and the issues of being in time. So you don't get out of it, right? But the expression of God, that God hasn't changed because the very nature of God is a relational God. So the incarnation is an expression of who God is, that he is a, a God who wants relationship. All right? If your God is just one God, 
and uh, is there above time uh, how can he ever communicate to us how can he ever be a relational to us and come into time if he's always outside of time if he's always outside and he's always this great God outside all right so and and um, the very fact that you believe that the Quran is eternal or most of you believe that the it shows that actually God is relational and if he's relational if he's a if he's a God of a word then that word has to be communicated and why would it be communicated if only to have relationship so we say that in the beginning was the word the word was with God and the word was God and then in verse 14 of John chapter 1 and the word became flesh and dwelt among us God hasn't changed God has expressed himself in his very nature as being a relational God yeah. And, he also, and God also said in the Old Testament that he's going to make a new covenant with the children of Israel. And if you, if, you, if you do read the Old Testament, there's many passages that talk about the coming Messiah. Okay, um, There's a passage here I want to read out as well to Muslims. It's Jeremiah 32, 27. It's, it says, I am the Lord, the God of all mankind. Is anything too hard for me? And that's the question. Is there anything too hard for God? No, there isn't. God can come into his own creation be our saviour through the person of Jesus Christ because our God is a God of miracles our God is a supernatural God our God can move our God can change, our God can heal so that is the God that you need to get back to, Jay Smith said you've got the wrong God and he's 100% he's correct, don't follow the God of war, the God of fortresses, follow the God of Israel, the God of peace, the God of love the God of relationship, the God that wants to save you, who wants to give you a future and a hope, believe in that God yeah. I ask you now because there's going to come a time where it's too late to repent, repent now, and bend the knee. God is saying to all men everywhere, repent, come to Christ Jesus and get salvation. Mm -hmm. Forget the false prophet Muhammad and come to the Saviour Jesus Christ. Wow, Amen. that's awesome mate, that's absolutely awesome. So, um, we're just going to have a few last minutes uh, talking. Have you got anything else you want to share bro? Uh, any questions or any thoughts? I just think, I just think the people who don't know God, and that Muslims, atheists. I think you really need to study the scriptures, and you really, if you really want to know what truth is, and you don't want to, and you just want to, don't have opinions. Come to the truth, because if the truth is what the truth says, and you're not right with God, then you're not. That's not a good place to be. So I urge you now, repent now, and come to Jesus Christ to save you from hell. Amen. And um, read the Bible. It will talk to you. Let it. Let the Bible speak to you. And don't speak for the Bible and think that you know what the Bible's saying. You need to study. Amen. Amen. Any any one last question to me, mate? Um, any, anything? Oh yeah. Um, when we go Hyde Park again, what do you think is a uh, what do you think would be the best, the most devastating death blow that we can give to the Muslims in order to wake them up and shake them up to, to the gospel? The death blow? Yeah, it's going to really cripple Islam and make them think hard. I think, I think what we need to do, I think the biggest death blow is if we learned Arabic. <laughs> 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 yeah. Which I'm going to teach myself for the next few weeks, right? <laughs> and then I'm going to teach myself Arabic in the next few weeks. Yeah, I've got a bit of Arabic here. <laughs> cool. Atta Boduna Min Duni Alahi Mala Yamilika Lakum. What is it? What's he saying? That was the Arabic. What's that? I don't think you can pronounce that. I'm trying to pronounce it the best way I can do it. Well, the Arabic there. Well, we've got a long way to go before we're Arabic scholars. But I think the biggest death blow is... I was thinking this the other day. We need to learn Arabic. So I'm going to teach myself Arabic. And if you could have a crack at it as well. And then what we need to do is read some of the Arabic manuscripts, you know, uh, the Sana manuscripts. We need to go and read them ourselves. Yeah. and make notes on textual criticism and, yeah. and find